In this video, I'm going to demonstrate how to create a GeoGebra applet to be able to approximate the area under a curve using rectangles. And I'm going to follow along with the setup that's listed within the directions for Lab 1. So, um, first I'm going to open GeoGebra, and it looks like this. This is a standard view. I have my algebra sidebar and my graphic sidebar. I'm going to go down to the bottom input bar and type in the function that we use in Lab 1. The function is f of x whoops, is equal to um, negative 1 divided by 320 times x minus 40 all raised, so outside of the parentheses it's raised to the second power, plus 14. And I press enter and that creates the function. I see that the function is listed over here along the left algebra window, and it's also displayed in the graphics window, but we can't see it because we're zoomed in too far. So the first thing that I'm going to do is go to the Move Graphics view. And if I go to the drop-down, there are a number of options. I could zoom out a few times by clicking to this, and now if I click anywhere on the screen, it'll zoom out sort of in a center zoom. And now I can see this curve. It's an upside-down parabola, which makes sense because it's squared. Um, but another option is that if I click this, uh, it will. I can zoom in just along the y-axis or just along the x-axis. I also have the option to hold the screen and drag, and now I'm moving the entire screen at once. And let's zoom in along the y a little bit and zoom in along the x because in our problem we're interested in x values from 0 to 60. The next thing I'm going to do is create a point, so I'm going to go to this top toolbar, and I want the point to live on the function, so I drag my cursor until the function is highlighted. That creates a point A, which is listed here. I'm going to create another point, B, which is listed there. And uh, I can check to make sure that those points are actually on the curve by clicking the point. And if I drag the point back and forth, it stays on that curve. And I, in this case, I want to move the points to 0 and to 60. And it's not necessary for it to be exactly perfectly 60, but I can drag it till it's pretty close. And if I wanted to, I could zoom in and make it even more accurate. So now that I have my points A and B in place, I'm going to create a couple of sliders. So the first slider, I click here, and I can click anywhere on the window, and that's where the slider will be created. The first slider I'm going to rename to have, be called, instead of A, it's going to be called lowercase n. And my slider values, I want to have a min value of 1 and a max value of, what do I say here, 50. And the increment is going to go in increments of 1. When I press apply, what happens? Let's explore this slider a little bit before we make the next one. So the min value of 1 means that this least value on my end value is 1, and the max value is 50, and the increment tells me that I can make it go any numerical value in between. Let's do the same thing, create another slider. This one we're going to name D. D? Sure. And for D, my min value is 0, my max value is 1, and my increment I'm going to keep at a tenth when I press apply. And again, if I wanted to move this slider around, I have to change my tool to the move tool. Otherwise, it would just create a new slider. Let's say that, um, so there we are. So now we have our two sliders. Now the cool thing happens is that there's a pre-existing code within GeoGebra to be able to uh, sum rectangles. And the command for that is called rectangle sum. And notice that as I start typing, it pops up because it remembers that this is one of the pre-existing commands. So I'm going to enter the name of the function, which in this case is called f. I'm going to enter the x value of the left endpoint, which is the x value of my point a. That's what x of a stands for. And then I'm going to enter the x value of my b point, which is x of b. Next comes n and then D, and you'll see what those two things are in a second. And now I press Enter. Bam! So what just happened? Now I have this value of A pops up, and notice if I highlight A, it's telling me rectangle sum. That's the sum of the values of the rectangle, and in this case, 
looks like we just have one rectangle. How do I change that? I'm going to use my arrow and I can drag my end value and as I, my end value gets more and more and more we see that more and more rectangles are created and I can as the rectangles change you see that my A value also shifts that when n is just 1 this area is around 792 and after just a few more rectangles it drops down significantly 762 764, 765, and it appears to be petering out. So that's what the N does. What do you think D does? Let's just go down to like five rectangles. Now it will be more obvious. Right now my D is at 0.4. As I shift my D, it looks like some rectangles get taller and some rectangles get shorter. And why is that? Because D is telling me what the height of each rectangle should be. When D is all the way over at zero, that's telling me that I'm using my left endpoint to be the height of each of the rectangles. Whereas when I shift it this way, and D is 1, then it looks like the right endpoint is the height of each of the rectangles. So hopefully this was helpful to help set up uh, the GeoGebra output that's useful for Lab 1, but it's also useful for all of the rectangle approximations of areas that we use throughout sections 5.1, 5.2, and even into 5.3.